Okay, yes or no. Yes or no, uh, we all made our standard, like our primary standard solution yesterday. Yes, hopefully we did, okay? So um, here's the idea is that uh, your primary standard, because it's been sitting for a little while, there is a, there is a small chance that if you did not totally mix it properly the first time, that some of the more dense parts of the solution have moved down to the bottom. So what I would do, shh, the first thing, as soon as you go to grab your primary standard, just cap it tight, and I would just invert it another three times. You don't have to do it 10 times, but I would invert it another three times, just to make sure that yes, it is uniformly distributed, that KHP is uniform, uniformly distributed uh, amongst your solution. Now what we wanna do today is we wanna titrate our potassium hydrogen phthalate. We want to titrate our KHP. That's really all we got going on today. All that's involved is basically pipetting out 10 milliliter samples of your KHP into an Erlenmeyer flask and then adding enough sodium hydroxide so that it neutralizes it or completely reacts it. You're going to do that four times, and if you get three or four good results, then you're fine. You just go ahead and stop, you clean up, and then you head back in here, and you've got time to start doing your calculations or work on your major assignments or whatever, okay? For some of us, it might take a little bit longer. I just wanna go through, I wanna run through straight from the gate what you should be doing today. Now let's take a look. We did, yes or no, we made our solution in our volumetric flask class yesterday. So partner one steps, that's, you don't have to do that. So you're gonna do start from partner two ta setup tasks and then you're gonna do partner one and two all together, okay? Remember this lab was built for two days, but are we doing it over two days? No. No, we're doing it over three days. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, okay? So we had to split that up and so we'll reformat it for next time, whatever, that's not gonna affect you. Partner two setups. Rinse the burette in the deep metal sink by the emergency shower. Do you know what I'm talking about? There's a metal sink over there. Now, you don't actually have to do that, okay? What I would prefer you to do, instead of doing that, is you're gonna have your burette. I'll take, I'll take the stopcock out of this one. You're gonna have your burette and you have to choose an appropriate stopcock, okay? Now, most of you probably won't use the yellow stopcocks because it doesn't have a threaded adapter on it. This one just pops in, and what happens if you put too much downward force on it? It pops out, right? So most of us probably won't use it, but if we run out, we'll have to resort to these. Whatever, that's totally fine. Most of us will probably use this. You're going to grab one, one that has a plastic adapter on it, and the threads have to be pointing down, right? The numbers have to be like right side up. And so you're going to put it on, and if it doesn't go on all the way, and if it doesn't fit kind of snugly, you got to either choose a different burette or choose a different stock cock. Is that okay? You just choose one, whatever. It doesn't have to take a long time. Just make a decision. Thread it in in place and this is kind of actually kind of a pain in the butt sometimes but that's fine there we go thread it in so that it's not going to come out and what do you want to do before you actually start using this thing yeah you got to rinse it out right so close your valve on your stopcock because what's going to happen if you start pouring water in here or a titrant in here and it's not closed yeah you're going to start coming out the bottom right so take your funnel and you're just going to add of your sodium hydroxide, you're gonna fill it up maybe five or 10 milliliters, okay? So you're just pouring it in here and watching it down there. Good, totally fine. So now I've got my, I've got my sodium hydroxide a little bit in here and you're just gonna take it and ever so carefully, <laughs> what happens if you accidentally tip it too much? It's gonna come out the other side, right? So just, just carefully, Take it, 
and you're just going to, sometimes it likes to kind of take off on you, and you're just going to coat the inside of it, the sodium hydroxide, just so that if there's anything in here that was acidic, it's neutralized now. Perfect. So you're going to take this, and you're going to flush it out into a waste beaker. Now, I don't know if you can tell, you probably can't, but when I did that, when I did that, I noticed a small air bubble in here. Now, you want, you want to get any air bubbles out, because if the air bubble comes out in the middle of titration, that's going to mess with your volume. So just drain it. Just wait for it to drain. It's totally fine. And once it's drained, then you can properly fill up your burette. Now that we've rinsed it, now we can properly fill it up. So let's fill it up as much as I can here. So that's how much sodium hydroxide I have left, whatever. So I've properly cleaned and rinsed out my burette, and that's perfect, no problem. Uh, obtain approximately 70 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide, and then you're gonna use a funnel to fill the burette and rinse a film a few milliliters out, good, uh, perfect. So we've got this filled up about as high as we care to, right? Can you fill it above the top line? Mm -hmm. You can. Yeah. You just got to empty it so that it goes below the top line. Please, for the love of goodness, don't try to have your meniscus stop at zero. There's no point. It's a waste of time. You still have to measure your initial volume and measure your final volume to get the volume difference anyways. There's no point. Just don't worry about it. So we've got our burette ready to go. Now what do we gotta do? We gotta pipette 10 milliliter sample of KHP into a clean Erlenmeyer flask. So I've got my clean Erlenmeyer flask. You probably should, at the very least, rinse it out with distilled water first. Um, by the way, it doesn't matter how much distilled water is in your Erlenmeyer flask, and I'll, I'll talk to you about why that is here in a little bit. So I'm gonna at least rinse it out and dump it into a waste beaker. Perfect. So now I've got my KHP and I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna pipette out 10 milliliters. Why do I not wanna pipette directly from this thing? Why is it a really bad idea to pipette straight out of here? Because you can knock it over and it. I could knock it over and I could dump out my entire solution and you'd have to start over from yesterday's beginning. That would suck. What else? What if, do you know, do you know what these were used for last time? No, you don't. So what if there's a little bit of contamination on the pipette tip? What's gonna happen? As soon as I put it in here, well now I've contaminated my entire sample. Shoot, so what should I do? Well, yeah, if you do that. But what should I do to avoid that? Instead of pipetting out of here, what could I do? I can just take a, a tiny 50 mil beaker or 100 mil beaker, right? I'll take my KHP, dump a bunch in there, and we've got extras just in case we screw this, this, fun, uh, this, uh, group, uh, this group up. We still have extras that are totally untouched and they're unsullied, okay? So let's take a look at this. Do you remember how to pipette? Ooh, do you? All right. Am I gonna take the end here and cram it in as hard as I can? No, you just, just take it, squeeze it, just gently press it on there and let it go and it'll just pull up your liquid. Again, do you know what this was used for? No, you don't. So what I would do is I would put it in, I would put up, pull up about half a bulb's worth, pull up about half a bulb's worth, and then just kind of coat it the same way you did with your burette. I would do the exact same thing. And then I would dump it out the other end, the top end, okay? I'd dump it out the top end, and then I would just clean it off, and now you're good to go. So now you've cleaned out have we successfully rinsed out any stuff that was in here? Yep, perfect, love it, awesome. Now we can go ahead and we can pipette it. So we're gonna take that, I'm gonna pull it up, 
Again, you can tap it to the bottom and it really slows down. I'm gonna pull it above the line. I'm gonna cap it with my forefinger. And I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna gently let it go until the meniscus is at the top of the line. Perfect, 10 milliliters, boom, done. I'm gonna wait for it to drain because this is really important. Okay, perfect. So now I've got my uh, potassium hydrogen phthalate. Now I wanna ask you, am I gonna change the number of molecules of KHP by adding water into this? Mm -hmm. Am I changing the number of molecules of KHP? Mm -hmm. No, so it doesn't matter how much water you add to this thing. You're not changing the number of molecules of KHP, right? And that's really important. Because as you add your titrant to this, it's going to drop and splash up onto the sides of the container. Periodically, when you get close to your end point, the color change of your titration, you want to take, and you just want to rinse off out the sides. You want to take the molecules of KHP that have splashed onto the sides of the container and rinse them back down into the bottom here. Wim. Oh, that's such a good question. Okay, we're going to use a chemical indicator for this, right? Because indicators change based on acid-base interactions. So I'm going to add phenolphthalein to this. KHP is an acid, so it should... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It should stay colorless. Oh. Okay. Do you know what's going to happen when I add a base to this? It's going to turn pink. If it goes really super pink, you went too far and you shouldn't use the information. You want the most barely detectable pink that you could possibly ever lay your eyes on. So what you should do is you should take something white like paper towel or a piece of paper and you should put it under your Erlenmeyer flask so that way you know that way you know when you get a color change. Is that okay? So my volume is about 32 and a half, so I'm gonna, we're gonna dump this. What you should do, and I've never shown you this before, but with your dominant hand, you swirl. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Both. Oh, both, all right. I'm right-handed, I'm gonna swirl with my right hand, and I'm gonna use my left hand to operate the stop cough. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna add it. The first one, you're always gonna screw up. So just add it as fast as you can and stop when you get a color change. I'm gonna keep going, 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 keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I kind of know when to stop, because I kind of know how much water or how much titrant it'll take. Oh. Oh, it's starting to turn pink. It's starting to turn pink. But as I'm stirring it, it's staying colorless, okay? So I don't know if you can tell. It's, it's hard for everybody to see at the back, but is this still totally colorless? Yeah. Yes, yes it's totally 100% colorless, right? So add more. Okay, so you gotta add more. And this time I'm gonna go drop by drop. And once you know you're close, you just go drop by drop. And you want the most pale shade of pink that you could possibly imagine. I know it's tough, I get that. Idris, you're so funny. I'm just talking to Wim. I know you're talking to Wim. You're gonna go drip by drip. And you want to stop when it is the most pale, pale, pale pink you could pale, possibly pale pink imagine. Still colorless. I know this is a pain in the butt. I get that. I get that. I get that. I get that. Oh. Oh man. 
this is actually what you should be doing. You should be trying to get the tiniest, tiniest, palest color you could possibly imagine. What? Do you need two people to do this? No. What do you mean two people to do this? You have more control if it's only one person. Yeah, you, you literally have more control if it's just one person. Unless you like twins or something. In one body. One more draw. I feel like I'm gonna mess it up. Yeah. That's too pink. That's too much pink. I went too far. Oh. Oh. That's too pink. Yeah. I went. I went a drop and a half too far. I missed it. So I probably, I probably screwed up by about 0.3 millime milliliters because I was trying to go too fast. So don't, please don't try and save time by going too fast. When you go too fast. You screw up, and you have to do it all over again, okay? So here's the idea. We're giving you lots of room to be able to write down your results, right? My, uh, your initial goes under initial. Your final goes under final. But your final burette you reading, you'll carry over to the next initial, right? Do not start a new titration if your volume is lower than 35 milliliters. If it's, if it's 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, don't start. Top it back up, get a new initial volume, and then start going. Does that make sense? Good. Do you, I, are, are we kind of okay with this? Yeah? Okay. Don't, please don't forget to add your phenol failing. Because what happens if you forget to add your fetal failing? No, You'll never see a color change. And that's going to stop you. Okay, good? Um, glasses and aprons, and we're at the same lab bench.